Welcome to my video. To get new educational videos and updates, please subscribe to my channel. I'd be very grateful if you could please like and share this video, which I hope will give you a beneficial knowledge. The idea of the laser peripheral iodotomy is to overcome the pupillary block that happened with the angle closure. And the laser is doing an opening to communicate the posterior chamber with the anterior chamber and this will relieve the angle closure so the aqueous comes through the opening to the anterior chamber and this releases the pupillary block indications either angle closure or prophylaxis in the other eye with the acute angle closure glaucoma the settings high power three pulses high magnification medium aiming beam so the focus is on the iris I put it at zero and the Abraham contact lens is helping magnification concentrate the power decrease the corneal burn keeps the eyelid open minimize the eye movements and tamponade if there is bleeding you have to counsel the patient very well and you have to warn the patient it is a little bit painful uh, the, he might feel clicking sound in his head and the preoperative drops you have to use pilocarpine, apricronidine and topical anesthetic where to start the opening of the laser peripheral iridotomy I usually examine the patient on the slit lamp and identify the superior marginal tear strip and avoid doing the opening under this marginal tear strip meniscus this is identified here by the red arrow and by this red line this is according to a recent prospective randomized trial that found that this photopsia is less with temporal opening than superior opening so in my opinion I prefer doing it at 11 o'clock and identify a crypt to have a thinner iris and less energy in opening this iris or at 1 o'clock or the least preferable to me is 12 o'clock this is because you might have some air bubbles inside the opening and this make it difficult for you or there might be some bleeding and when the bleeding uh, come in front of the pupil this makes the vision blurry Some people have the opinion to do it temporarily, that's fine. Avoid doing it central like this area and as we said avoid doing it under the marginal tear strip on the right and the left openings. This will make more chance of having double vision and this photopsia after the laser I usually start at this black dot area in a crypt and enlarge it with high power high magnification and medium aiming beam the most sure sign that you are full thickness through the iris is the gush of pigments and aqueous from the opening which I call Rashad volcanic eruption sign so the gush of the pigments and aqueous is similar to the volcanic eruptions so this is a case of narrow occludable angle and shallow AC 
as shown here in this video. I put the lens and examined the superior part of the iris. And you try to find a crypt. After higher magnification, I found a crypt at about 12 o'clock in this area. And you see here the gush of the pigments and aqueous. This is the Rashad volcanic eruption sign. So now you are sure that you have a full thickness opening in the iris. This size is okay for me it's roughly about one-fifth of the pupil size but the most important thing is to have a full thickness opening this is another case of angle closure and this case is having brown thick iris you examine as well you might add some argon laser before the egg in these uh, cases so after some attempts we have a small opening as shown by this arrow and now you have the Rashad volcanic eruption sign which the gush of the aqueous and pigments and this is a sure sign that we have a full thickness opening then you can enlarge the opening a little bit the most important thing not to injure the lens capsule So it is not always easy as that, you might have bleeding and you might have inflammation or pain, rise of the intraocular pressure, corneal burn, glare, dysphotopsia, lines or shadows, diplopia and sometimes there is failure due to closure and very rarely lens opacity after injuring the lens. This is the bleeding that is very common, don't panic, just press with the lens and choose another site. That's why here in this case we have two spots of bleeding and this is the opening. So that's why the patient has to stop any blood thinning medication for two weeks before and make sure the blood pressure is controlled as well uh, this photopsia can happen and double vision can happen as well and you avoid that but avoiding the marginal tear strip after one hour you have to check the intraocular pressure and check the patency by retro elimination as shown by this white arrow so you put the illumination on the pupil coaxial light and you can see the light through the iridotomy. Post-operative care, I usually use topical steroids six times per day for one week then tapering for six weeks. And we review the patient again in six weeks with IOP check, gonioscopy and anterior segment OCT if you are in doubt of the opening. Avoid myotics because of the risk of synechia. This is the anterior segment OCT. It is non-invasive and you can see before and after the laser peripheral iridotomy. You can make sure that it, the opening is full thickness and you can assess the angle as well. Thank you for watching.